guys, I'm wearing my Apple Hello shirt because yesterday was Apple Christmas! Yay! Hey, what is up guys? It is Annalise and I am here in the tech corner for a very exciting reason. And that is to talk to you guys about Apple Christmas. What is Apple Christmas? What do you mean, Annalise? It's, it's September. Well, yesterday was September 12th, 2017. A Tuesday to be exact. And what does that mean to your Apple fanboy here? Is it was the day of the Apple event. The iPhone 8 Apple event. The Apple event of all Apple events. The 10 year iPhone anniversary Apple event. More than just the iPhone was announced. An iPhone 8 was announced and it's 8 plus. The Apple Watch Series 3 was announced. An Apple TV 4K, which most people didn't care about. And one more thing. The iPhone 10! <laughs> I'm going crazy. Folks, yesterday was a big day. It was a two hour long keynote. That keynote normally I feel like is normally an hour. And it was glorious. Now I understand a lot of you guys are not Apple fanboys like myself. But you want to be in on the know, on the, on the new stuff and all the things. And you want to be in the loop. But you don't want to sit and watch a two hour keynote you know, with a whole bunch of tech nerds talking about tech stuff and you know, oh, here's an iPhone and that's that's, that's why this is cool, but oh, here's a thousand, I, I, was, oh, it, I, 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 I don't know. think, like, it, it gets a little bit too detailed for somebody who's just interested on, like, what's the new iPhone and it gets a lot, like, just, just very detailed that not a lot of people care about, to be completely honest. What I decided today for this video to do was a Apple September 2017 keynote event in under 10 minutes. So, I have my notebook here that I had stuff written down and I decided to highlight a few key things. Now you may be also saying to yourself, hey Annalise, I see you don't have the entire page highlighted. You don't have that entire page highlighted or even that one. There's a lot of stuff that you're not talking about. Are you gonna tell us about it? Well, that's a very excellent question, um, anonymous viewer. So what I'm gonna be doing is this video is just gonna be kind of some key points that I think are gonna be overall interesting for the greater good of humanity and the, the people who are relatively intrigued. Now, for those of you who wanna get a little bit more, you know, wanna dive a little bit deeper, you wanna get a little bit more detailed, you maybe wanna hear even my opinion on some of these things and maybe if I'm going to purchase this item or whatever it may be, well, I'm gonna make a individual video for each of these product categories, the four things that we're talking about today, um, minus the Apple TV. So I'll make three extra videos that are going to be pretty much me talking about all the things that are on my list that I don't have highlighted here. Kind of going a little bit more in depth, giving you my thoughts and opinions, and uh, yeah. So I'll be leaving links to all those videos in the description down below. They're going to come out a little bit later after this video, so bear with me on that, guys. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with what I think they started talking about first, and that was Apple Watch Series 3. So Apple announced the new Apple Watch. It is called the Series 3 Apple Watch. Now with this one, there are two versions of it. There's going to be Apple Watch GPS and there's Apple Watch GPS plus cellular. Now something that is super cool about the Apple Watch having a cellular capability is this gives the Apple Watch so much more freedom, I could say, because the previous models, you know, the Series 1, Series 2, and the first generation, which is what I have, they work mainly over Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So pretty much if you're out of range of the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth, normally it's about 30 meters, then your Apple Watch just tells the time and it tracks your activity if you have a Series 2 and that's about it. What's nice about this new cellular option is it, I've always said that the Apple Watch is an extension of your phone, but now that is even more true because of the fact that you can leave the house and go make a phone call while you're on the road, leave your phone at home, you can be at the gym, in the pool, sending a text message, like there, there's so many possibilities that have expanded because of this. Now something I think is really cool about that cellular capability is that that the SIM card is like super tiny itty bitty because the SIM card is already like in the grand scheme of this it would be big in comparison but they've made the SIM card super super tiny as well as the antenna is the entire display that's so freaking cool and like innovative that's so smart instead of making the watch larger they just kind of use the pieces that they had and repurpose them now going on to that the Apple watch is the same physical size like the frame is the same size on the new one which is awesome because one thing I was not too keen on on the idea about is if they were going to change the size of the Apple Watch and then I would have to replace all 12 bands that I've bought for my existing 42 millimeter watch. Bands are expensive and I think Apple is at least, you know, Apple has a heart and they don't want to make all the users rebuy their Apple Watch bands for a new freaking Apple Watch. So luckily, watch, same physical size, the frame is the same size, the sapphire.
sapphire crystal on the back is a little bit thicker. Um, now something Apple did announce is that there's updated heart rate monitoring and heart rate sensing. So I think that might be a little bit with it, but it kind of tracks your um, resting and your act active heart rate and your recovery from a workout heart rate. And they, they had this big section of the keynote where they talked about how the heart rate can tell about certain diseases or, you know, heart palpitations or whatever it may be. And so that's why Apple decided to make a lot more detail or put a lot more detail into their heart rate sensor. Now, I'm not sure how much of that is coming along with the watch OS 4 and how much of that is with the physical hardware. I know some of the tracking is the physical hardware, but I don't know if the reporting is going to be software or hardware. Uh, I guess we'll find out a little bit more with that. When it comes to the overview on the website, it's a little bit vague on what that is. They kind of say some of the features of the new device are features of just like watch OS 4. So um, we'll actually see once it comes to watch OS 4 coming out and then I'll be able to test that on here and let you guys know. Some quick little, um, you know, cosmetic things is the colors that they come in are going to be space gray, silver, and this new gold color that's not exactly rose gold, but it's not exactly gold. It's kind of like a pretty soft gold in between of the yellow gold and the pinkish gold that the two were. And then you still have silver and space gray. They also still come in the Nike, as well as the Hermes bands, the Edition, but now Edition, there's an extra color. It's like space black, so it's a like a ceramic black, which is really cool. And then you still have stainless steel in space black or silver. With the cellular version, you can get that in all of the models, but the non-cellular version, so just the GPS model, is only available in the aluminum models. And a few other technical things that are pretty neat is Siri actually is going to speak back to you on the Series 3 Apple Watch, which is really cool, as well as is the new dual-core processor. It's just going to make the watch run a lot faster. It's still going to keep up with that 18-hour battery life, and I'm looking forward to hopefully getting a new watch that's just a little bit speedier and lasts a little bit longer, because mine, which is going on about two years old now, is a uh, can crawl from time to time if that makes any sense. I love my Apple Watch dearly and it's a trooper, but I'm ready for a new one. That water resistance is the one thing I've, honestly, I was hoping they were gonna announce an Apple Watch and the fact that they announced an Apple Watch that is, you know, they are, the uh, the Series 2 is already waterproof and, you know, pool proof and ocean proof and not deep sea diving, but you know, being able to swim at the gym, which is what I like to do. So the fact that they came out with a new watch that is still water resistant, probably gonna be getting it. So that's it for Apple Watch Series 3 and then it'll be available for in-store pickup on the 22nd of September. Okay guys, now the next thing that they talked about, which I know everybody's been waiting for, is the Apple TV 4K. Bad joke. I don't think anybody was really waiting for this. But, you know, since it was announced, I will just kind of read off the teleprompter, if you will, some new things about the Apple TV 4K. Um, first off, it's 4K HDR. Yay. Prettier picture. This section of the keynote was kind of frustrating because they were, like, displaying it, and you can't see how a display of a display has updated. Out, it, it loses some of its all power by viewing it. So I bet the people, you know, it sounded like they were in awe. The folks were actually at the keynote, but I wasn't actually at the keynote one day. So pretty much with 4K and HDR, you're getting brighter colors, greater detail, better color gamut, wider color gamut, I guess you could say. So just a prettier picture. But with that, you also have to have a nice TV. And if you have a 720p TV, you're not going to see any of that 4K on it. So keep that in mind when looking to purchase a new Apple TV. One thing that is going to be cool about this new Apple TV is it does have the A10X chip, which is what's in the iPad Pro. And uh, the previous model has the A8. So it is a couple of generations faster processing speeds. So at least, you know, things like Siri is going to work a lot faster, just moving between apps, which um, I know is always a nice update, is a little bit faster. And then pretty much you've got an updated generation of Bluetooth. So it goes from Bluetooth 4.0 to Bluetooth 5.0. Available for in-store pickup on the 22nd of September. Blah. Now that we got that out of the way, on to the thing that everybody was waiting for, and that is the iPhone 8. Yes, it's an iPhone 8, not an iPhone 7S. I don't know why they made the skip. I think it's because of the fact that this is the 10th anniversary of iPhone, but I'm not mad about it because I think 7S sounds silly. Same thing with 6S. I was still irritated that they did that because it's too many S's, but whatever. So the iPhone 8. Something that's new about this guy is it's got an all new designed body. There is glass on the back and there's glass on the front and there's an aluminum band that wraps around, which is just like throwback to iPhone 4S days. But what's really neat about the glass on this phone is it is laser reinforced steel. So pretty much, uh, you know, just because you have glass on your phone doesn't mean it's going to be completely destructible now. Or pardon me, it is reinforced with laser welded steel. So, I mean, same thing. It's just going to be pretty strong. The aluminum that wraps around like a band on the outside is a 7000 series aerospace grade aluminum. So just really light, but really strong. It is still going to be water and dust resistant. So IP67 rating means that your water resistance on your phone is more for oopsies, not adventures. So don't make this your underwater 
camera. Don't go bringing it underwater to take pictures and whatnot. You're gonna want an underwater case for that. You want a waterproof case. But when it comes to, oh, hey, I accidentally fell in the pool or a, you know, a cup of water spilled on my phone, you're gonna be safe in those instances. Something that I found actually off of the website is that the glass has a oleophobic, oleophobic coating, which pretty much means that it is going to be resistant to oils and fingerprints and smudging um, or more resistant to those things. So I'm excited to get a hands-on experience with that to see if it actually works. Something else you get too with the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus is wireless charging because of that beautiful glass backing. You have the ability to use a charging pad, which Apple is going to be coming out with next year, as well as, um, you know, third-party companies have announced that they're going to come out with that, that you have the option of taking your phone and putting it on a charging pad and it charges. Like that's absolutely spectacular. Something that's nice about this new phone is it's got the A11 Bionic chip. Compared to the A10 Fusion chip, it's gonna be 70% faster CPU performance, so pretty much it's just like a faster phone. And what's nice about that A11 chip is with the new camera that's on this phone, so it's the same megapixels as the 7 and 7 Plus, but the sensor is a lot larger and wider, so it's just gonna make your camera work a lot better, a lot smoother, as well as when it comes to its optical image stabilization, using your camera with that wide sensor and that fast faster sensor, being able to translate it into the A11 chip, bringing that stabilization in photos and videos. It's, it's just gonna make it pretty much the faster chip with the optical image stabilization, smoother pictures, math. Something that also updated with the camera is through video. So the megapixels haven't changed on the photo side of things, but when it comes to the video, 4K has finally got 60 frames per second, folks. I'm so excited about that. And then slow-mo is 1080p at 240 frames per second, which is really cool because previously it was only 720p, so lower resolution resolution, but butterier film, and then same thing with the 4K was only 30 frames per second, so now you're getting the high resolution with the buttery movement and stuff, so I'm very excited for that, because that's what I use my iPhone for mainly, is like my video recording device. So that is one huge pull for the iPhone 8 for me, is just camera updates, video updates. And then one very exciting thing, since I just mentioned the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, is that they are the same physical size. Something that Apple has already said on their website is that the new cases will fit the older phones. So my case that I have for my 7 Plus here, if I decided to get an iPhone 8, it would still fit that new phone, which is very exciting to hear. Because nothing is more frustrating than having to get a new phone and then also have to buy a new case. Now the same with most of these products. It is available in stores on the 22nd of September. Okay guys. Now there's one more thing, and that one more thing this year on the 10th anniversary of the first iPhone announcement is an iPhone 10, Not an iPhone X, I know it looks like that. If they use the Roman numerals, I don't know why they're changing it up. It's just edgy, I guess. I don't know. iPhone 10. this is a Ooh, guys, listen, this is a big kahuna phone. Now, when it comes to this phone, a lot of the things are the same as the iPhone 8. So same A11 Bionic chip, still 12 megapixel camera on the back, seven megapixels on the front. Those updates that came along with the video, so the 60 frames per second on 4K video and the 240 frames per second on the 1080p video for slow-mo, that is still all on the new phone. You've also got things like portrait lighting, which is a new update to the Plus series of the phone. If you're familiar, the 7 Plus introduced portrait mode, which gave you a really cool bokeh effect to any picture. It found a subject, pulled that into focus, bokeh, or blurried out the background. Now with portrait lighting, what it's doing is within that mode, it's also adjusting your lighting. So finding your point of focus, so your person of focus, and doing things like, okay, make all the background black, or do a little bit more contour lighting, or whatnot. So something that's new with this phone is you get that portrait light, which is also on the 8 Plus that I didn't mention, as well as you get that portrait lighting on the front. Buckle up, guys, I'm gonna talk about a few exciting things. So one thing with the iPhone 10 is it's not the same size as the iPhone 8 or the 8 Plus. It's a little bit in between. It's about 0.2 inches bigger than the iPhone 8, which is going to be kind of substantially smaller than the 8 Plus. Another thing is that the screen is 5.8 inches when the 8 Plus is 5.5 inches. How do you math that? Well, the front of the phone is all screen. It's all display. Yep, that kit. You've probably seen it on the internet. I'm not gonna act like you don't know it. The whole phone is display. From the bottom to the top, and then it goes around the camera sensor thingy up here. All display. All of it. 
no buttons on the front. Your gestures have changed a little bit. So instead of your home button be a physical button, now the way you get home is you kind of just swipe it away. Another thing that, you know, the home button had was Siri activation. So you can of course say, hey Siri, and that activates your Siri. But another way to do that currently is just by holding down this home button. Now, the side button has been extended. So you hold that down for a few seconds, the same way that you do with your home button, and it activates Siri. Or you can still use that voice recognition for hey Siri, which is still pretty neat. Now I would say the biggest update when it comes to the iPhone 10, like the one of the biggest things is face ID. So something that you also might have thought about is, hey, my touch ID where I can just rest my fingerprint on there, that's that's gone. It's not on here because there's no home button. Where's the touch ID sensor? Touch ID is not on the iPhone 10. It is now called face ID. So within your phone, and I'll kind of, I actually conveniently got a picture here. So you know how up here you've got these little sensors right now? Now that's like, that's the only not screen part of your phone because within there, there's the true depth camera. And what that's doing is it's a mixture of things. You've got your FaceTime camera, of course, as well as you have a camera that projects over 30,000 little invisible dots onto your face to be able to scan your face, feel the depth. You've got a flood illuminator, which will be able to light your face up, I guess, in the nighttime. I don't know how that's supposed to work. And then there's another thing on here. There's an, an infrared camera to read the pattern to recognize your face. So all these these things are working in harmony to be able to recognize your face and supposedly tell the difference between your face, a picture of your face, and a mask of your face. If that's not some Spy Kids crap, I don't know what is because that's insane. Like, I, I've watched a lot of videos so far of people who were at the Apple event and saw somebody testing out the face ID like live in person and they say it was super dope. And all I have to say is I am very excited to try it out. And I'm very excited to just see it in real life because that seems absolutely bonkers to me. The idea of face ID. Like it's, and now something that they did say is that face ID, like I said, it'll be able to tell between a picture as well as a mask, as well as if you grow a beard, you're wearing glasses, you have a hat, you change your hair, you're wearing a scarf, it can tell the difference between all those things. The way that it works is you just look at your phone. You have to be actually looking at your phone. Your eyes have to be looking at your phone. That means your eyes have to be open. No people on Twitter that were like, oh, you can unlock your man's phone by just using his face now. You don't even have to touch his hand and get his fingerprint. One, don't break into your significant other's phone. How about that? But two, the eyes have to be open. So breaking into somebody's phone when they're sleeping, sleeping does not work. Eyeballs open. You look at your phone and then it's unlocked and then you swipe up and then you're good, which is crazy. Now, Apple did say that if you have an evil twin or anything like that, this might not be the best option for you and you can do face ID and passcode. So you can do one or the other or both, up to you. But that is a new thing that replaces Touch ID on the iPhone 10. Um, is ex it is exclusive to the iPhone 10. It, it works the same way that Touch ID does. So if you have an app that uses Touch ID, it will now use Face ID, including Apple Pay, which I'm, I'm just interested to see this in my hands in real life. But if you wanna know a little bit more of my opinion, like I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, I'm going to be doing individual videos on each of these little topics, the Series 3 Apple Watch, um, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, and the iPhone 10. So if you guys are interested in that, please check Check out those links in the description as soon as I have those videos out. I'll put those links down below and we can talk a little bit more about this and get my opinion and get your opinion and, you know, talk about talk about some things. Um, now when it comes to the iPhone 10, the pre-order date is a little bit later than the iPhone 8, so it's going to be October 27th, and the day that it'll be in store is November 3rd. So you've got to some time before you can get your hands on an iPhone 10, but at least in the meantime you can check out that iPhone 8 in Apple stores when it comes out on the 22nd, which I'm very excited to go see and take a look at. I haven't decided, um, I haven't decided what phone might be the best fit for me, but I'll keep you guys posted. So guys, that is my, um, so guys, that is my, so guys, that is my super speedy recap on the Apple September 2017 event keynote. 
Um, now, like I said, if and if you see on this paper, there's a lot more things on here that are not highlighted that I, and there's even some of these highlighted things that I didn't mention, that if you want to know what I still have written down on here, and if you want to know a little bit more in depth about these products and these announcements, please check out one of my various videos that I will be putting out in the next week or so that is a little bit more in depth on the Kino and the products that were announced and the things that were announced. And then also, I kind of want to talk to you guys about my opinion on some of these things. I wanted to save this video to be nice and short, so that way if you wanted to be filled in on the loop of the Apple world, but you didn't want to sit there and watch a two hour long keynote, which I don't blame you, it was, it was very long, and if you're not, you know, it's not meant for the public. They talk about a lot of like, this is our store's mission, and blah blah blah, and you know, this is the economy, and blah blah blah, and the, the but all the, I'm not even saying words, um, but it's a lot of just stuff that for somebody who just wants to know, hey, what's the new iPhone like? There's a lot of crap in there that you don't need to hear if you just want to know about the iPhone, you know? Um, so I hope this video was helpful in some way. I hope you were informed or entertained or both. If you were all of the above, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this. If you want to see me make more videos like this, let me know in the comment section down below. If you thought this video was interesting or informative, share it with a friend. Maybe you have a friend on Twitter who was kind of like, hey, do you know what happened with that whole Apple thing? You can send them this video and then they'll know what happened with that whole Apple thing. Ah, spreading the wealth of knowledge. It's, it's a wonderful gift, people, I tell you. Um, but otherwise, that is it for me. Thank you so much for sitting here through this, uh, this kind of long video. I love talking about tech stuff. As you know, I love being here in the tech corner, which is where I make all my tech videos. So if you want to see future tech videos, um, check out my channel, subscribe, all that fun stuff. But thank you for letting me share my excitement about um, yesterday's event with you because I don't want to talk my friends ears off too much about the Apple event and I know at least if you're watching this video you were somewhat interested you didn't have me just come up to you and be like hey can I talk to you about Apple stuff okay guys well that is it for me stay beautiful have a marvelous day and I'll see you guys next time bye even though this video was super dated thank you guys so much for watching it I know it's a, a few weeks late I went to Disneyland and that kind of threw a wrench in everything but thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for the next one